Thank you, Austin. Beautiful as always. Our scripture lesson this day is Psalm 8. Hear the word of the Lord to us. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him rule over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and all that swim the path of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Who am I? That's one of those questions that I've asked God on numerous occasions. Every time you have a major change, a a major life event, we tend to reevaluate who we are, who we are supposed to be. So I've asked that question of God on, on a number of occasions, and perhaps it's a question you have asked as well. Who am I? Who am I, God? Our psalmist asks that. Compared with all the beauty that you have made, who am I? This is often my question as I hike in the mountains or snowshoe down a snowy trail on a quiet winter's day. Who am I compared with all this majesty and wonder? Now sometimes as I'm doing that, I know in my gut that I am, I am insignificant. And it would take very little for me to get swallowed up by the strength and the power of everything that surrounds me, especially hiking on a steep hill, right? I often find myself simply standing with an overwhelming sense of awe. Have you ever done that? Looked at a beautiful sunset, maybe. Uh, There's, it's often, it's, it happens often for most of us, I think, that when we find ourselves in a particularly beautiful piece of God's creation, we have that overwhelming sense of awe. We are human beings whom you have made, O God. But who are we that you would even think about us? The response to that question that we hear from Psalm 80 is loud and clear. The psalmist writes, you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. 
Now, for those of you who know your Reformed theology and are familiar with John Calvin, that sounds a little odd to your ears. Because remember what John Calvin said? We are, do you remember? Worms. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> we are worms. And yes, we, that's, that's true. But the psalmist affirms for us that we have been made a little lower than God and crowned with glory and honor. We are made in God's image. So moving from feeling so insignificant uh, to recognizing our significance, even in the face of such grandeur, that's a powerful feeling, isn't it? That, that back and forth, I am nothing, but God cares for me. The mystery of it all invites us to affirm that God is our God. Amazing as that is. What a faithful message for Trinity Sunday. That is to prompt us all to proclaim God as our God. Not just my God, our God. The psalmist's question, who am I, is not only about his or her own existence. It's a profoundly theological question, and therefore it's a fitting question to look at on this Trinity Sunday. I'd, I'd like us all, I'd encourage us all to linger for a while on that question. Who are we? Instead of trying to simplify and to make the mystery of God as understandable as possible, perhaps let's try to open that mystery up a bit. That is, uh, open our world to the awesome and mysterious claim that our God, the creator of the majesty that surrounds us, gives us the awesome responsibility of caring for this beautiful world God has created. The structure of this psalm itself is kind of interesting. You may have noticed as we read through it that it, it followed a pattern. It almost mimics the shape of a mountain, if you think of it this way. The psalm progresses that one, this way. It begins by praising God, then moves on to a look at God's work in the world, and then it comes to the peak of the mountain with the question, who am I? And then that question brings us right back to a look at all that God does for us in the world, which in turn leads us right back into praising God again. It's almost as if we have climbed a mountain and descended it again. It's a cyclical thing. Asking ourselves who we are leads us into seriously looking at who God is and how God is at work on our behalf in this world. So it's, it comes full circle over and over again. I can't think of any better way to begin or to end this sermon than the way Psalm 8 begins and ends, with a claim of praise that God's name is majestic in all the earth. How is God's majesty evident in your life? What difference does it make that this majestic one is not just any Lord, but our Lord? The relationship indicated in these opening and closing words is key. O oh Lord, as the psalm begins, it, O oh Lord itself suggests a relationship. But then there is added, O oh Lord, our Lord, our Lord. The emphasis is worth noting. We are talking about the one God Almighty. My God is our God, the one and only God. When we read Psalm 8, and it speaks of the glory of God's creation and how God cares for us, we can't help but remember the creation account as it occurs in the first chapter of Genesis. Did that kind of run through your brain a little bit as we were reading through the psalm? God creates, in Genesis, God creates order out of chaos. God creates a world that benefits the human beings whom he creates whom he has created lovingly in his own image. This creation story from Genesis is familiar to us, so we might not think about it much, 
but it's worth giving it a little extra consideration this morning. You may or may not be aware that at the time that this psalm was written, there were a number of different ideas floating around within different communities about how the world came to be and what role human beings play in that world. Common to every other creation story that we know about that comes, that comes out of that time period. Uh, okay, except for, we'll, we're gonna accept, that's in the, um, in the Middle East, okay? We're not talking about Native American creation stories because they, they are very similar to our own. Uh, common to those Middle Eastern creation stories was the idea that a multitude of gods was responsible both for creating the world and creating chaos within that world by arguing and fighting with one another. Great. <laughs> the people in these communities understood that these gods were very powerful and very selfish, often drawing unsuspecting human beings into the midst of the dramas that took place between and among these gods. You could not count on, if you were part of that community, you didn't believe that you could count on those gods for much, except that they would certainly cause disruption and chaos in your life. These gods didn't want any kind of relationship with human beings. They simply wanted to use human beings for their, for their um, well, simply for the well-being of the gods or their own whims, and they wanted offerings. That's a completely different view of God, isn't it, than, than our tradition. The God we worship, the one God of the universe, in contrast, is a God of love and grace and mercy, a God who brings order out of chaos, a God who seeks a personal and loving relationship with the human beings God has created. A God who, despite his grandeur and power, cares about the well-being of each and every human being he has created. It's, that's how we're used to seeing God, right? If you've come to worship uh, in, a, in a church community like this, that's the view of God that sounds familiar to you. God who brings order out of chaos, who brings love and justice, and mercy, and peace into our world. But at the time the psalmist wrote this, it was a very unusual view of the world and how the world was created. Thanks be to God that we know that the God who created the world loves us, cares for us, draws us into relationship with himself, and doesn't just want to use us for, for his own silly purpose. What a blessing that we can say, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. <laughs>